We begin in The Hague, where the International Criminal Court has sentenced uh, Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga to 14 years in prison for using child soldiers. Uh, the Hague Court announced the penalty earlier today, saying Lubanga is an educated individual who should have understood the seriousness of the crime. Uh, Lubanga was found guilty of the war crime in March uh, for recruiting and using child soldiers during fighting in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo in 2002 and to 2003. Lubanga is the first person convicted by the ICC, but taking into account the six years he has already spent in uh, detention during the trial, Lubanga's sentence has only eight years to run, and he could be paroled uh, earlier. Now, for more discussion on the sentencing of Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga, we are joined by Jacques Bahati, policy analyst at the Africa Faith and Justice Network. Mr. Bahati, welcome to InFocus. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so first, uh, your initial reactions to the sentencing of Lubanga to 14 years. Uh, Africa Faith and Justice Network um, welcomes the uh, sentencing of Mr. Lubanga, and uh, I believe um, it's just fair. It's fair. Do you, do you think that 14 years, which are essentially going to be eight years after having served or stayed in detention for all the other years, is fair? fair and ju is it justice to those who are affected? Uh, no, I, I believe the affected people uh, would see this uh, sentencing as a non-event because uh, it doesn't bring back the, the losses, uh, whether uh, goods or, or, or individuals that they lost through the hands of uh, the, uh, what Lubanga did. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, again, uh, on the international community level, it's a good thing, but for the Congolese people, I think this is non-event. Now, we know that uh, one of the most uh, painful experiences uh, uh, that is a consequence of the wars in Congo is uh, sex crimes against women and children. And uh, some have said that the prosecution was not able to prove this beyond reasonable doubt. And therefore, actually, Lubanga got off the hook, got uh, away uh, without uh, being convicted on those charges. Do you think uh, that he did actually get away? or? You can't really connect him directly to those crimes. Yeah, uh, I think um, the, 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 the issue of justice, uh, you have the defense and the, the lawyers arguing their case. But the question is, uh, for me, um, how can, uh, can we stop this from happening? Whether he could have been convicted for these, uh, the, 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 the sex crime and, and other things, we still are dealing with the same issue over and over again. As we speak, the people in Ituri are still being raped and are uh, being killed. So this, com this, this sentencing for the Congolese people is not significant because the root causes of what brought Thomas Lubaga to, be, to recruit these children and uh, the children commit these crimes has not been dealt with. So this is a bigger problem. Some actually see Lubanga as just a small fish. Uh, they are even bigger uh, fish that need to be caught. What needs to be done? What needs to be done? The, the Congolese state has to look deeper into internal problems and make a commitment to make justice a priority and a right. Mm -hmm. Counting on a legal system that is far away from the people does not benefit the Congolese people and anyone in Africa. If there are leaders, young people, and anyone concerned about Africa listening at this moment, we need to understand that justice must be a right and we have to set up the institutions to deliver that justice for the people and avoid to go and beg for justice in the international, um, in the international uh, setting and uh, we know how to deliver justice. Yes. Uh, in a word, is this a deterrent though, in any way? Yes, yes it's, no? the, it's a deterrent. Okay. We still like uh, the international community to be organized uh, and uh, we, 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 we encourage the improvement of the ICC. Well, thanks a lot, Jack, uh, for your insights. Thank you. uh, now, uh, Jack Bahat is a policy analyst uh, with uh, uh, the Faith and Justice Network, and we want to thank him very much for joining us today here on In Focus.